Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. So in the United States, for advanced stage disease Hodgkin patients, the standard of care is six cycles ABVD chemotherapy. Okay. Now in Germany and Europe, their standard of care is Bayer Cup or Escalade Bayer Cup. That is much more intense regimen, uh, followed by stronger chemotherapy. Um, in terms of the response rates, ABVD is not, it's a little bit less effective than Bayer Cup at getting to a CR and also long-term disease control. However, in terms of toxicities, Bayer Cup is definitely way higher. You know, the, in terms of treatment-related mortality is higher. In terms of hematological toxicity, infectious toxicity is higher and also possible risk of secondary cancers. Um, so there's always a debate between the U.S. oncologist versus the European oncologist with which regimen is better. You know, whether we should give ABB to everyone or we give Bayer Cup to everyone. Um, you know, the pros and cons are not everyone needs Bayer Cup. And there are certain patients that you can get away with ABVD only, then why expose those patients to the extra toxicity of ex Bayer Cup or Escalade Bayer Cup? And so that's why, again, the, we have a trial of using the PET scan to differentiate where, whether or not someone needs to be treated as bear cup or not, like the big intergroup trial I was talking about, which is finished accrual. So we're very uh, anxiously waiting for the data on that, see if you can, well, treat everyone's ABVD first. If they're PET negative, then finish out the ABVD. If they're PET positive, then change the, the bear cup strategy of giving them more intense chemotherapy. If you put all the data together, it's clear that there is a small progression-free survival benefit to the use of intensive regimens such as escalated beer cup when compared with ABVD. So I don't think anyone would argue that point. But if you look at overall survival, it comes out the same when you compare these regimens. And that's probably because patients, the, the, the slight excess of patients who relapse after ABVD type chemotherapy are subsequently salvaged with high dose therapy and stem cell transplantation. So we know that the escalated BACOP regimen has significantly more toxicity than ABVD. So really this becomes a balance of effectiveness and toxicity. On the one hand, if you have escalated BACOP, the patient's risk of relapse is going to be slightly lower but they're going to be subjected to a more toxic regimen and 100% of the patients are going to be subjected to a toxic regimen which is going to affect their fertility um, in particular, give them pretty significant short-term toxicity. On the other hand, you can have a, a, a regimen like ABVD which typically does not affect fertility, typically has less short-term toxicity, has a slightly higher, uh, excuse me, a slightly lower uh, progression-free survival, but only a minority of patients are then going to be subject to the, the toxicities associated with um, high-dose therapy and stem cell transplants. So it's a balance of disease control versus early and late side effects of treatment. My, my preference, because I think in this population, fertility in particular is such an important um, issue for many of these young patients. I prefer not to subject all my patients to a chemotherapy regimen that's likely to damage their fertility and I would rather leave that for the minority of patients who, so whose disease is not controlled by ABVD.